Hello! My name is Northern Lion. Shall we play some Binding of Isaac? I don't know why this started so awkwardly. I randomed and I was actually thinking as I clicked the random button. Don't I just want to be Isaac? Aren't we just due for an Isaac run? But then I randomed Isaac. And I can't tell if that's the best of both worlds because we randomed the character that I wanted to take anyway. Or if it's the worst of both worlds because people will be like, Well, you were supposed to take Isaac anyway, you ding dong. I don't know. At this point, does it even really matter? Let's check out our item room. Our item room has tarot cards. Tarot cards are, you know, situationally useful, but probably one of the lesser space bar items that I would consider to be useful over the course of the entire game. Mini Mush is something that I will pick up, though. We got a Wheel of Fortune card, which basically turns into a slot machine, which basically turns into an item if we manage to save it to the chest, which we likely won't. Um, but taking Mini Mush was as much like a privilege as it was a necessity, because we have no other opportunities for rerolls on this floor. Got very lucky to find the second secret room, but kind of unlucky that it didn't necessarily contain any items of value. And our curse room contains nothing of value either. Very quick moving first floor, can't really fault the game for that, can I? I'm gonna put a bomb down, does it work? Oh, it was like maybe a fifth of a second uh, off from actually working there. I don't like fighting pin early on in the game, unless I have items that uh, kind of like penetrate, if that makes sense. I mean, pin's pretty easy. Um, and I know items that penetrate is a great uh, great name for like an art growth album or something like that um, But B also just kind of comically funny uh, But like a mom's knife a brimstone etc etc can kill you in like one hit if you're kill pin And I should say in one hit if you're fighting it But it's very unlikely that we'd have those on you know the first fucking floor so I get where they're coming from there uh, but even a uh, I forget what the actual name for the item is but uh, the ability to get uh, piercing shots would be amazing. It's called, is it actually called the feather? I don't think that's true. It's like the hunter or something like that. Anyway, I'll know it when I see it. And hopefully I will see it over the course of this video. It sounds like I already know that it's coming, but I can't confirm nor deny that. So we got a two HP upgrades, actually. And I think that'll cap off what will go down in the books, at least from my standpoint, as a relatively okay floor. Um, you know, not going to write home about it, necessarily. But, uh... I think it went pretty well. Now, I've mostly just been kind of like killing time here. Uh, staying away from those bomb guys until the rest of the level kind of sorted itself out. But that's okay. We, we did well there, I think. We'll check out our curse room again. Curse room has some pills in it. This could be good, could be terrible. Bad gas is neither. Balls of steel is good. So I'm, I'm glad that we took the opportunity to come in here. We may find an arcade on this floor. It's kind of unlikely. Not absurdly so, but it could happen. Um, and that's great as well. Now, I would love to go to the shop at some point. I would love to go to the item room at some point. I would love to use keys to open golden chests, but unfortunately, the common ingredients to all of those is something that we do not have. We do not have any mechanical devices that you insert into a lock and use to open uh, a door or door-like structure. Mind you, now we have two of hearts. That is theoretically better than the slot machine. Theoretically, in theory. We'll see. Secret room could be here. It's not, so that uh, makes it very unlikely that we'll be able to get to this room. Now, um, we should, I think if I use my bomb here, might be able to find the secret room as well as get all this money. Okay, that's great, uh, theoretically, again. And if I'm able to get all this money, then what I might want to do... Okay, that's very nice, in fact. Oh, if only I had actually still had one more bomb, I could bomb my way into the shop and guarantee myself some items, but... Um, what I may want to do now is get the fortune teller, or, you know, the, the wheel of fortune, I guess I should say. And we'll see if that, uh, actually has items in it. I mean, or, like, if it has keys that it can pay out with, essentially. And if it does, then that's, uh, great for business. We could actually go to our shop, we can go to our item room, we could have a fanciful picnic with all these beautiful items, and talk about all the success that we're gonna have a little bit later in the game. But for now, ooh, one key is good. We're gonna use this on the shop, because we could always buy another key, or did we have a chance to buy another key. Uh, to go to the item room. Now we'll use it on the item room, and I'm going through all of this kerfuffle here. I may end up not taking the Wheel of Fortune card, by the way, now. Because Two of Hearts is way better if we ever do find a Blood Bank. Um, or just need to survive. We're going to see what is going to be rerolled, and... As much as I would love to save a reroll for the boss room, there's no question that Monstro's Tooth, I'm going to want a reroll. So we'll get the virus instead. We'll shoot all this just in case there's, uh, some extra money inside of there somewhere. There's not, it appears. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're not going to buy the coin purse because we can't buy the coin purse. 
Uh, although I'm tempted because we've got some decent uh, options so far. I guess we'll just go fight the boss then and hope that we get a good item and a good deal with the devil item, theoretically. But I'm very glad with the turn of events that we kind of had happen there. I could buy that pill. It could be Balls of Steel, but it could also be Bad Gas, which is not worth five cents. So, Duke of Flies, champion or no champion, uh, is not going to be a very tall ask for us right now. We're not doing uh, Stellar Damage. We're doing Isaac Damage. Stellar is a song by Incubus. I'm not quite sure how you got it confused, although I guess, you know, both Incubus and Isaac do start with I. Whatever happened to those guys? They made that, like, anti-George W. Bush song, and then they just sort of disappeared. Coincidence? Almost certainly. Um, let's take out these double flies here, which are really um, the biggest pains in the butt. But I did like the cave, so best of luck to you on future endeavors, double fly. Um, if we just kind of hang out over on the other side of the map, we should be fine. I think we've earned a deal with the devil here, by my own standards. The game disagreed. And I would say that means it's time for us to go down to the next floor then. We are real freaking tiny and real freaking fast. Unfortunately, we don't have any real freaking mechanical mechanisms that you insert into a door-like structure to open it. If, uh, you know, it's being protected from intruders like ourselves. So we're kind of stuck in a position where, you know, we basically started the last floor in the same spot, didn't we? But we did pick up a speed upgrade and poison touch on the last floor. That's not necessarily anything to write home about. Uh, nor was the first floor, but I guess we're okay. More keys is going to be the uh, most important part of this endeavor right now. Everything else is secondary. HP, secondary. Damage, maybe like primary B. <laughs> you know, it'd be like one B on our grocery list. Right next to vegetables would be, of course, non-alcoholic Molson Canadian. Now, uh, let's just hang out on the other side of the map here. Catacombs is not the, the hardest floor, but it is the hardest floor we've done yet, which makes it relatively hard. If you know what I mean. It might be hard to understand me at some times. But, uh, we've killed one of these ding-dongs. I really should not have been in a position where I let the other one hit me. But, we're still rolling on those spirit hearts we got on the last floor, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, you're dead. And we still have a lot more, uh, kerfuffle to deal with here. Look, it takes us like six shots to kill one of these disembodied heads. That's disappointing, because these guys are uh, apt to hit me, and uh, apt to be hit into a position where they could just run into me as well. But we're just going to fire some shots in, over and over and over, and eventually we'll whittle them down. A couple more each should be enough to finish the job here, if I had to guess. And we're done, and we're done. Okay. Keys, keys, two keys! That was all worth it now. And we also uh, got up to 15 cents, which means the shop is uh, not only able to be accessed now, but also able to be uh, legally engaged in some economic activity. So, let's try to make that happen. That is, uh, well this is, I should say, a very important kind of corridor for us here. A vestibule, if you will, a gazebo of goodness, uh, a hallway of hallmarks, I guess we'll find out. In our item room we have the Parasite, which is an item that I'll probably just pick up. I think it's okay. And it has cool interactions with other tiers, uh, other tier effects, I should say. So, kind of like the Parasite. And we're also going to be fighting uh, the Duke of Fly's older brother. He's like, hey, I heard you beat up my bro in math class yesterday. Your bro was being kind of a dick. He was trying to tell me that, you know, the square root of negative one is a rational number. And I'm like, dude, come on now. Are you trying to make me look like an asshole here? Um, so I'm just going to say that he deserved it. And uh, you are actually maybe even weaker than little bro. So I don't want to make you feel bad about that. I mean, there's other ways to be strong in the world than physical strength. But you're the one that came at me with, you know, flies blazing. So... I think you might want to rethink where your value to the world actually lies. And we're not going to reroll stem cells. It's a shot speed upgrade in addition to our HP upgrade, but I think the HP upgrade goodness outweighs the shot speed upgrade potential downness. Because not everybody thinks shot speed upgrades are negatives. Um, I don't even necessarily think shot speed upgrades are negatives. I'm more likely to think of them as kind of like neutral, but uh, too many of them can be annoying. And uh, I guess they stop being neutral if you... Um, if you pick up Lump of Coal. Which you're, you know, oftentimes going to do, probably like once every three runs or so, Lump of Coal is going to show up for you. And you don't have much of a choice in the matter but to pick it up, unless you want to reroll it. In which case, uh, you're very much looking at a gift horse in the mouth, and I think uh, we all know at this point how I feel about doing things in that vein. Now, uh, I'm hoping Parasite's going to be... I mean, Parasite is one of those items that I, I took it not because it's a great item that's going to change the way our run looks uh, long term. I took it because it's kind of fun, and the tier effects uh, that stack with it do make it useful. It's never going to be, you know, Mom's Knife, uh, and it's never going to be 
brimstone, but it could be useful for us, and it's kind of cool, and we don't get it very much. So that's my philosophy on that matter. Mom's purse is just a it's viable. So I think we're gonna leave this floor. Uh, again, another quick one. We are a little bit tankier. The fact that we have not earned any deals with the devil kind of blows my mind. We got the parasite, which could be cool, and we're leaving the catacombs, which is, I guess, a triumph in and of itself, huh? And we're on the caves, and again, you know, it's kind of becoming a, uh, a running theme on this run, but uh, no goddamn keys makes Homer something something. Don't mind if I do. Now, um, we will go to the curse room. I don't mind losing the spirit heart that we have to make it happen. Spiders and the spirit heart, okay. Funny joke. Let's leave. Uh, there are a couple of bombs here, which is actually nice. Secret room, secret room might be viable, but perhaps even beyond that, um, the real benefit here might be careful. <laughs> might be careful. No, the real benefit here uh, might be that we could use these two bombs to bomb our way into the secret room and then possibly find uh, an item room or shop adjacent to it. Although the shop is looking a little bit less useful right now than the item room would be. Um, I would try to make the best possible use of both. So, we're on the lookout for a better trinket if possible as well. One bomb for one key is a very easy trade to make. Especially since we can now, for sure, go to the item room. I just wanted to see if maybe there was something in there that I wanted to pick up first. And we have lard! We're very fast, so lard is kind of a no-brainer in this situation. We're still very fast, in fact. Unfortunately, probably should have gone to the secret or the mob trap room first because now uh, I'm gonna have to fight a little bit harder to get in there and uh, it's unlikely to make an enormous difference but something that could matter a little bit at least could matter a lot but it, if it matters it will likely matter a little bit uh, which is comforting I suppose we still need damage our HP is great now uh, and normally it's really nice to have this much HP of course because uh, you would be trading some of it away to a deal with the devil unfortunately we have not really had the opportunity to do that thus far. So I'm a little bit, I don't know, lacking in that area. But if we could get a deal with the devil, I would gladly trade away. I mean, my, my standards are not very high for deal with the devil items now. Because the amount of um, HP upgrades I have is is enormous. So I, I could afford to take a not so great deal with the devil trade and, and be okay with it. So I am leaving green nub on the other side of the screen alive. And the reason being... Uh, is that it'll shoot poison bombs, do damage to Gertie, and maybe even poison Gertie as well. I think it should have poisoned Gertie anyway. Um, not every shot is obviously going to hit, and I of course have to be careful that I don't get caught in the explosion myself. But, uh, for the most part, it should actually work out in my favor. And we're not doing a whole lot of damage. Oh, I didn't mean to hit the nub there. Uh, we're not doing a whole lot of damage, but uh, this is a nice little boost for us. A way for us... Oh, I walked right into it. A way for us to use bombs without using bombs. And uh, now we'll take out a little green nub here. And we're at a half heart interval. Beautiful. Doesn't really matter. So we get an HP upgrade, and we're not going to reroll that in the hopes of getting what? A tears upgrade, I guess? Uh, we are going to explore the rest of the floor, though. And this is looking like it could be one of those runs where we just slowly but surely uh, find ourselves getting whittled down, you know? I think this is one of those runs where, without the damage that we want, we uh, just slowly fade into obscurity. I'm obviously hoping that that ends up not being the case. We really don't need very much to make sure that doesn't happen to us. Um, I mean, we won the last run with very little HP and not really that much in the way of damage upgrades with the exception of a mom's knife, which is obviously a great damage upgrade, but still, one damage upgrade nonetheless. Um, or what, one, like, end game item nonetheless. Alright, be cool here. I've lost way too much health, and why this is pissing me off, I almost never worry about this, but I would love to be able to go to that mob trap room. There was a chest in there. The chest might contain keys. I don't want to go down to, like, the sixth floor in a row having zero keys, and we've been lucky enough to be able to go to the rooms that we want to go to, despite our key bereftness, but seriously. Okay, that, thank you. Much appreciated. The game is... You want to play a game, Northern Lion? It's uh, monitoring me right now. we got a Lawnmower Man situation going on here. I've never seen The Lawnmower Man, but I do reference it a lot because it was a formative... Seeing the movie poster for The Lawnmower Man at the movie rental store, which, as of right now, is something that a lot of people can relate to, but will eventually date you, I'm sure. Um, hey, lucky us. Uh, that was a formative part of my childhood experiences. Six more cents. I don't think it's worth going to our shop uh, just for that. 
I think it's time for us to leave then. Looks like I won't be going to the mob trap room. Hopefully that ends up not being a major problem. I don't think it would be a major problem, but you ever think about that? Like, we have conversations with ourselves, or, you know, we have conversations with each other, I should say, but sometimes we have conversations with ourselves. Not necessarily anything wrong with that. Might want to see a doctor if it bothers you, though. Um, but, uh, yeah, we have conversations with one another, and we're like, yeah, I remember being at the Jumbo Video or the Blockbuster when I was younger, and probably within, like, the same year that we had a conversation like that and didn't think about it being weird, we're like, yeah, make fun of our grandpa for being like, well, back in my day, just during the Great Depression, uh, fuck you, grandpa, Great Depression, I can't relate to that shit. We're gonna be like that one day, except instead of having some kind of hardship that we triumphed over, not to say that, you know, living through, uh, you know, hardship is necessarily something to be jealous of at all, of course, that's a very weird way of thinking, but... Um, instead of having something like that that, like, formed our lives, right? Like, it really made us better people and strengthened our character. We're gonna be like, Oh, back in my day, I was down at the Blockbusters when they still had the margins to support free popcorn. And then your grandkids are gonna be like, Dad, I download fucking Matter on the internet for free. Matter! Nobody's bought a car since 2041. You just p purchased the recipe from Chevrolet and printed out at the... The 3D printer down the street, Kinko's will charge you 10 bucks to print your own uh, Chrysler Sebring. Maybe 15 if it's a sedan. I mean, it's the SE edition. But anyway, and we're like, yeah, I don't know. It's like the Fight Club quote that I resent but also think is hilarious in the proper context. is like, our grandfathers had the war to shape them. We don't have anything. We're a generation raised by our mothers. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, most of the people who fought in the war probably... They I mean they they didn't want to. They would much rather just be sitting on their ass, being like, "Oh, this movie is really deep," and then you know, not watching their friends get killed in a in a trench in Ypres or something like that. But anyway, um, sorry to bring you down. I'm just saying. I think it's I think it's funny that we live in. Well, not everybody, not everybody, and then there are problems that that people have in the world today. But it, you know, I've had a very kind of privileged upbringing, and I was comfortable for for most of my life, and. When I get old, I don't know what I'm going to bitch about, but I'm sure I'm going to bitch about something, and it's, it should completely fall on deaf ears. If somehow you're watching this right now, and you ever end up hearing me have a conversation where I'm like, well, it would, life was so much better back in 2004, before, you know, blah, blah, blah. You should just be like, what, what do you have to complain about? Pretty much. Anyway. But I do find the complaints of, like, I don't have a defining experience for my youth uh, kind of funny. It's like, well, you know, you could go fight in a war somewhere, but you probably don't want to. Like, if you actually think about it. Oh, our pill is a speed down. It's starting to get a little, little scary here. We're probably back to, like, base speed. And now, of course, that I have keys, I can't find a place to use them. That's me complaining again. Oh, we've actually got unlimited keys, so if possible, I will go back and open this golden chest. Probably could have used these keys more efficiently. Is that golden chest actually openable? Whenever I see a golden chest, I just get like tunnel vision on the side of my head. Um, we'll look for the secret room next to this, and maybe we'll be able to get the secret room and the golden chest. The golden chest provided me with a lot of benefits there. This could be a turning point for this run. The secret room gives me enough money to never have to worry about it again over the course of the entire run, bar none. Okay. So I think we're going to come up and uh, hope that there's some rooms up here. I ideally, I hope that there's not a boss room up here because I'm feeling a little weak right now. All right. Shouldn't have mentioned it in the first place, I guess. That's my own fault. Maybe one of these days we'll uh, start doing a little bit more damage. We could get a deal with the devil after this boss fight. It's the depths part one. Could have war. I don't know. We're, we're going to see how woefully inadequate our damage is, though, in just a moment. Uh... What's better, the sun card, or two of, uh, sun card or two of hearts? The sun card is better, but if I can use two of hearts effectively before the floor ends, that would be great. Monstro 2, uh, if you're not doing very much damage, it's pretty much an ideal boss fight. As long as you have the speed necessary uh, to keep him trapped in limbo here, then, then this is not a concern. This should be an easy fight. It may take a while, but uh, it's going to be an easy fight regardless. So I think we'll just hang out here and talk about our day. How's your day going, guys? What you, would you get up to today? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Did you have a good time doing it? This is becoming like a sad, sad video. It's becoming like an ASMR thing. No, I'm not shit-talking ASMR, by the way. I get ASMR. I mean, I I, I don't experience it, but I understand it. Uh, on an intellectual level, at least. But I don't think you, you're going to have me making ASMR videos. Just, hey, I'm touching your scalp right now. You feel a tingle down through your elbows. Oh, that's uh, Apparently, that's how my own voice sounds in my own head. You know, there's an expression, everybody hates the sound of their own voice. 
I disagree. <laughs> that sounds cocky, but I don't know if there's any other way to phrase it. It was like, when I was a kid, I was in like, a, like seventh, no, it must have been eighth grade. I was in eighth grade, not that it necessarily matters for the purposes of the story, but, uh, and I hadn't realized totally that I had gone through puberty, even though looking back, I should have realized for reasons that I won't mention here. But anyway, um, but I was, in my head, my voice was still like, oh, yeah, hi, teacher, right? But then um, I always got in trouble for for talking in class and I was like well I'm talking as much as the other kids why do I get in trouble and they don't and then the teacher was like well it's because your voice is like really distinctive and then I heard it on a recording we were doing like a class play or something like that and I heard it on a recording and I was like I sound like I'm 50 years old that's awesome and I was self-conscious about it for like I don't know like 15 seconds but then I was like man that's really cool it has it had an interesting effect as someone who played a lot of like a Halo 2 on Xbox Live and you know those games. Imagine, like, the Call of Duty community, the reputation that that has now. That was the reputation that, like, the community in Halo 2 had back then, in 2004. Back in my day, things would be better if we still had Xbox Connect instead of Shut Up, Grandpa, anyway. Um, so people would be like, if, if I got, believe it or not, I used to be okay at the game. And, uh, because I spent eight hours a day playing it because I was in 10th grade and didn't have anything better to do. But anyway, um, so, like, 16-year-olds would get on the microphone and be like, yeah, whatever, dude. Move out of your parents' basement. And I'm like, I'm 15. And they'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever. You sound like you're at least 40. And I'm like, seriously, I just got out of science class. Anyway, that's the end of that long and winding story that didn't necessarily go anywhere. But yeah, you know, not everybody hates the sound of their own voice. I understand being self-conscious about it, for sure. Um, but I, I don't know, maybe just because I've listened to it on recording so much, uh, I, I don't really pay much attention to that anymore. We have unlimited keys, I gotta open everything up. Steam sale is probably my number one reroll target, unless there's Monster Manuel in here. That's the contingency. <laughs> we'll reroll it into Book of Shadows. Fan fucking no. You know, I'm not even gonna finish it. That's it's that's how bad it is. So again, we you know, we finished Depths Part 1. What do we pick up? Basically nothing of value. I'm not thrilled. Uh I'm not thrilled at all. I'm we're in a dark place here. I don't know if we're ever gonna come back from this. I mean, we're, we're gonna probably beat Mom. It's reasonably logical to assume that I'll beat Mom on this run. I'm starting from a position of, you know, relative Isaac affluence. Lots of health, uh, at least. And we have the Sun card, which is gonna make it even easier. But, we need some damage items. I can't just continue rolling on, like, Isaac's starting damage, and, uh, that'll do. I hate to do this, and I- the reason I hate to do this is because I love the D6. But, we are in one of those rare positions where I absolutely do not have second thoughts about getting rid of the D6, and that's because, you know, Isaac starting damage plus the um, the parasite is not good enough for us to beat the game. I, I I don't think it is. We haven't really been getting deals with the devil that would make me feel uh, any more encouraged about it. So I think I honestly have to take Blue Candle just to have a reasonable chance of success here. And now immediately after taking Blue Candle, I've gotten a little lazy and taken some damage. So let's let's recuperate here. Remind ourselves that this is not a one run just because we picked up Blue Candle. It's even less of a one run winner than Mom's Knife, which is a, a great run winner, don't get me wrong. I'm just, you know, trying to anchor that somewhere. On the last run, it was very important for myself to keep my humility and remind myself that I, I did not won the run just because I got Mom's Knife. Luck down, doesn't matter to me. Uh, that's okay. It's okay. Let's take Blue Candle and continue moving on. We do have enough keys for the second time in this run to do whatever we want, thankfully. See, uh, our tier damage is not very good at all. And that's why I don't feel bad about taking Blue Candle, even though sometimes people complain about this item. It's a common trend, common trend, I should say. There's a lot of items in Isaac that some people have a problem with. Not everybody has a problem with all the items that would be on this list, but uh, all of the items on this list, there are some people that have a problem with them, shall we say. And that's okay. You can't please everybody, and sometimes you can't even please anybody. But uh, what I am going to try to do here is please myself by giving myself the best chance possible to actually win the run. So it sucks to get rid of the D6, but... Eh. Basically not that big of a concern for me right now. Versus actually surviving. If that makes sense. That's not our secret room. Uh, it could be a big floor, but it is the depths. Depths doesn't strike me as a particularly difficult floor for us with these items, but we're still not super powerful, to be honest with you. Um, I will open this golden chest. Lucky bomb, I guess. Um, well, wasn't great. Uh, we're still not overly powerful. Blue Candle makes us good, but it doesn't make us great. Uh, it, to make us great, we would need, like, something that augments our tiers to the point where they're actually, uh, 
dare I say, usable, maybe might be the word that I would want to pick up there. We'll see, though. I may get, uh... I may get lucky and manage to pick up one of those items. And if we find a deal with the devil for a mom's knife, then you can start yelling at me. Teleport is real not good. It's real not, real not good. There's a boss trap room. Ooh, this would be beautiful. If I could at least go to the boss trap room, maybe get a squeezy? Pentagram? Nope, okay. Fuck me too, I guess. Um... Well... Alright, that was a good use of a key, I would say. Do we have mom's purse? I can't remember. That was a smart... Blow up though. I can't remember if we have mom's purse. We bought it, I think. Unless that was on the last run and I've forgotten. I got blown off course by my uh, my story about my own voice. Now I can hear it inside of my head and it actually is freaking me out a little bit. Sure, we traded a bomb and a key for two bombs and some money and a little bit of health. Not a great trade, but um, not disproportionately bad either. And if we can just be smart about my. Uh, Blue candle use. You see, like it takes six or seven shots to kill these guys. That's why I don't feel bad about taking blue candle. Um, we might be able to one shot Larry Jr. No, we got close though. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I don't feel bad about taking it at all, even though you know me thinks the lady doth protest too much. Uh, if I didn't take it, I'm pretty confident that we would have beaten Mom. But our like our ceiling for how we could have fared on the run would be much much lower with the sun card. And this, we may have a decent chance of actually making some good stuff happen, but I can't confirm nor deny that uh, I feel confident about this run right now. I would say I'm somewhere in the middle. I, I think we're probably at about a 40% chance for a... Okay, let's, let's take it this way. 99.5% chance of beating Mom. It would have to be almost unfathomable for us to not beat Mom. Beating Mom's heart? 80, 80 to 90%. This is another reason why it's very easy to beat Mom with the blue candle. Um, beating Isaac, I think we're looking at maybe 30 to 40 percent. That's how difficult I think the game gets uh, as it goes on. Uh, and then beating Blue Baby, I don't know if you actually, like, if you beat Isaac, I think you actually have better chances of beating Blue Baby than you would have for beating Isaac, if that makes sense. Actually, I don't. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean the game gets easier, but it does mean you get more items. Um, fantastic! Thanks for the range upgrade. Uh, we did have Mom's Purse, so I should have maybe played that uh, Fortune Teller a little bit more. That's okay, though. Womb XL. Very tempting. Very, very tempting to use the Sun card. It may actually be the right play, but I think it's smarter to save the Sun card and use it as a full health pill, basically, along with the Necronomicon bonus that you get from it. Two of Hearts is, is fine. Like... I don't know. It's the second time we've dealt with this dilemma. If I if I find no need for the Two of Hearts card, then we don't have to take it with us. In fact, I shouldn't take it with us because I could very easily see myself just forgetting the Sun card as a result. Um, left hand probably beats Lucky Toe. Gives us a better chance of getting deal with the Devil items. Also teleporting to uh, boss rooms. Or teleporting to uh, deal with the Devil rooms. Sorry, is actually, actually what I meant there. Health is good. That's always good. Money's great. That's not always great, but it's never bad, I guess. Uh, careful. Oh, you know, one of the unsung heroes of this run so far has been Poison Touch, which at least means that if I get hit by an enemy like that, uh, I don't get hit by them twice. I was hoping that was kind of a half heart, but whatever. Uh, I would love to find the XL floor as soon as possible. You know, we have put ourselves in kind of a shitty position. Well, not put ourselves, but we find ourselves in kind of a shitty position because we can't get a deal with the devil on this floor unless we are able to teleport to it or, you know, otherwise fabricate a way to get to it. Uh, because we're on an XL floor, and XL floor on this area means no deal with the devil. XL floor on floor one is actually a good thing sometimes because you get an earlier deal with the devil, maybe. Um, whereas on uh, the womb, it's substantially worse. Two bad gas pills is what I got for that. Well, there's probably a use for that two of hearts card now. We'll see. I may go back for it. I may just replenish enough health that it doesn't matter. But, um, you know, I, I still, even though there's been a, perhaps seeming like a discouraging floor so far, it's not because uh, the floor has been tough. It's been because I've pl been playing uh, pretty terribly, I would say, all things considered. And, you know, the rooms that I've encountered are not necessarily indicative of the rooms we're normally going to encounter at this point. So I'm very hopeful that we actually are maybe, oh god, uh, coming close to the boss room. That was terrible on my part. 
Red chest gives us live bombs. Like I said, destined to be useful. Like, we, we could be coming reasonably close to the boss room area. That was very scary. Who would have thought that uh, one blue candle, not quite enough to kill the guts dudes here. Let's try that. It's enough to kill almost all of the, like, a, a fully developed brain dude. The guts dudes, I guess, are a little bit more HP tanky. HP tanky, also my favorite uh, Dragon Ball Z potion. What about this red chest? That's uh, spiders in this one. Thank you very much. I don't know why I did my Elvis impression when I thought of spiders. It's just a weird little psychological quirk, I suppose. And we'll toss another bad boy in there. Another red chest. This time we got flies. That's better. Objectively, it's not something that can kill us unless they run into... Okay, yes, YouTube comments, they could technically run into bomb flies and kill us, but... Within reason, it's very unlikely that these would end up hurting us instead of hurting the enemy. You know what? I'm gonna wait a little bit longer for that situation to present itself. So we're gonna drop a bomb here and hopefully... Tinted rocks? Nope. I should really go back and get that uh, Two of Hearts card. It'll only take us to not even full health now, so I might as well. That was a very awkward way of phrasing that, but um, it's a trip and a half to get back there, but this is a weird layout for an Excel floor, is it not? There's like no space, or there's no rooms in the middle. It's just like a big serpentine fucking Cinnabon. Cinnabon? You say, what do you say? It says Cinnabon, but I guess it's Cinnabon. I don't know. It's this, it's, it's, hey, what are you eating there? It's a bun. What's well, Cinnabon? Uh, you know, like flour, water. So no sugar, yeast, I guess, to make the bread rise. No, but this is a Cinnabon. Um, well, I mean, you could also put, like, oats and, and maybe honey or something in it, or... I don't know. It's really up to you. Sourdough? There's, there's many different kinds of doughs that can be evolved. Sweet bread? You can, have, you can have your gingerbreads or something like that? Uh, this is this joke's going nowhere, but I also see no way to get myself out of it, so forgive me. Now, um... Obviously, immediately after picking up that Two of Hearts card, I took substantially more dumb damage. This is... You know, at this point... Leopard can't change his spots, right? What a terrible attitude. Especially if you're dealing with something like addiction, for example. Um, but... I can't change my spots. I'm so... ingrained, I think, or it's so common for me to just take so much damage when I have low damage of myself, or when I have low damage myself, um, that I think it's very likely that I'm gonna continue to kind of hemorrhage and, and bleed out as we play more and more of this. Now, I may be in a situation where I have enough red hearts to actually survive that, unfortunately, and I'm gonna do my best to remember that, you know, it's important to stay prudent here. If I had more damage, I would be taking less damage, if that makes sense, but... There's our... I knew we were gonna join up with the other side at some point, so I wasn't too worried about taking a different path here. Let's just hang out and then do one of those bad boys. That pill is bad gas, which is meaningless when I also have a sun card in my rotation. This pill, though, teleported me to the other side of the map, where I will then have to walk all the way over. How exciting. Well, uh, I still think our chances of beating Mom's Heart very, very high. Uh, probably in the... Yeah, I would say 80 to 90 is still a fairly accurate representation, especially with, this, with the sun card, it's probably like 99. If you took away the sun card, we would probably be at 80 or 90. Uh, and the only reason it, there's that range is because it's basically like 80 if I continue taking the dumbest damage of all time, 90 if I somehow uh, just become less bad spontaneously over the end of this run and, and stop taking this much damage. Thank you for more bombs. Uh, this is scary, but otherwise fine. Two hits should do it. Three hits should do it. There we go. What, did, you, did I stutter there? <laughs> we'll get a spirit heart here. That's uh, exciting news. Don't hem me in, please. Uh, this is like an instant KO. The spirit heart here could end up making a major impact, or it could end up doing absolutely nothing at all. And another bomb, which is, will be important against Mom's heart, maybe. Alright, bloat. Scary as hell, but a great, uh, a great shot from Blue Candle there, twice in a row, is gonna make this pretty easy, I hope. Now, I'm really, at this point, HP means nothing to me. Tears upgrades would be something, but the Holy Grail is basically the pentagram. Well, I mean, the Holy Grail is a flying item, literally. And I wouldn't mind a flying item either. But uh, the pentagram, probably the best reasonably likely option to show up. But of course, it's just another HP upgrade. I'm getting killed with kindness here. That's okay. I'm gonna fight uh, Mom's Hearts. Again, I expect this to be a very easy boss fight. We'll probably end up running through most of our bombs, though. 
Okay, this is great shooting for me right here. I'm actually trying. I know that looked like I was maybe playing it up for comedic effect, but I assure you that was not the case. Uh, we will have to deal with a little bit of Monstro in our life. A little bit of Monstro by my side. A little bit of Monstro, what I need. A little bit of Monstro, what I see. Seriously, just die? This is a, how little damage I'm fucking doing right now. It's really frustrating. There we go, finally. I didn't want to use Blue Candle because I want to make sure Blue Candle's charged so we can get back in uh, into this like uh, vicious cycle that we've got going with Mom's Heart here where we put a bomb down and then Blue Candle and make sure that everything's good to go. You know the deal. Alright, so we at least uh, finished this up before Chubb showed up. That's exciting news. A couple more hits should be able to get the job done. And by a couple of more hits, I of course mean a couple more shots from Blue Candle because our tears are not very effective right now at all. So a slow run, not necessarily super slow, but a slow run nonetheless. And again, the sun card, as much as I would love to use it as a compass, that would be my old tendencies winning out over new insight, basically. Using the sun as a full health pill later will carry uh, substantially more benefits than using it as a, uh, a compass right now, basically. And that's almost objective. It's based on experience, but... Um, it, it could, could probably be mathematically proven with a large enough sample size, or at least, you know, postulated. Now, we're not super fast, and I hate fighting Monstro 2. I, I've said earlier, you know, if you're not doing very much damage, Monstro 2 is a good boss fight. That's true, once. After that, kind of becomes tedious. That's okay, though. Monstro 2 is just tedious in general, I guess. It's not, not my favorite boss design in Isaac, but uh, he does still manage to hit me. It does still manage to hit me, I guess I should say. I don't know if there's a gender pronoun associated with Monstro. Um, but this is the kind of conversation I have to engage myself in so that I can, you know, keep my sanity while fighting this boss. I'm doing the same thing over and over. We're done. We got some health. It was worth doing. Uh, and it was worth doing right as well. Now, this is a room I don't much like. Did get about 10% of the way through. Which, ooh, okay, that's... Nasty. Can't afford to take very much damage on this room. Keep in mind we are fighting, you know, one of the most difficult bosses in the game. In as little as maybe four or five rooms, or as many as ten, which is actually harder. Uh, obviously, but it might not seem like that based on the way I phrased the sentence at first. And with greed, you know, I should just be able to shoot the blue candle at him and block the shots, but it's not really worked out that well for me so far. Not that I've been specifically trying to do that, but... Oh, come on. You are deceased. Thank you. Now, this would be a good time for the left hand to just show up and give me, like, a pact or something like that. Okay. Um, I, I mean, this is the point in a run where I'd like to go over what we don't have. And that's a very negative way of looking at things, but it's also honest. Even if it is embellished a little bit. Um, we don't have... Very good damage with our tears. We do have blue candle. That's the yin to that yang. Uh, we don't have the ability to fly. That sucks. We do have a lot of HP. See, I'm trying to do like a balanced approach here. Um, we don't. Or we do have a good space bar item. I guess I'll give it that. Um, we don't have much else going for us beyond that space bar item and our HP. I don't know. We'll see. We got lucky with maybe the placement of our boss room here. That's exciting. Isaac, I don't even know. For Isaac, we may actually want to just use Blue Candle. But I don't know. I actually don't know the best way to do that. I guess we shoot and then use Blue Candle? Like, shoot once, then Blue Candle? So that when we shoot Blue Candle, it actually takes care of all of the shots, I think? I don't, I don't freaking know, man. Blue Candle sometimes chooses not to block shots either, as you just saw right there, unfortunately. Um, I should be constantly firing, but... It does take away a little bit of my percentage to dodge. Just a little bit of mental energy being expended there. One Loki's dead. That wasn't so bad. One eye is X. You know the deal. That was really good. And that Loki should be dead as well. So now we just have one little red fly to take out. One more hit. Will or should do it. Okay. This is a scary moment. And it's uh, a moment we've been waiting for. We don't have any orbitals either, by the way. Let's talk about that uh, delicious tidbit. I think we'd like... I think I'm doing this backwards. I think what you want to do is like a couple shots and then boom! Blue candle. Do like a couple shots and then uh, boom! Blue candle. Oh! Don't get hit by that. If you do, we should poison him though. 
Give him a couple of shots and give him an oh blue candle over the top rope there. A couple of shots here, maybe a moon salt off the turnbuckle. I'm gonna poison your butt. Uh, and I've dropped some poison right in your uh, your own poison hole. Okay, a lot of damage. I'm not thrilled about it. Ideally, I would love to not use the sun card on the Isaac fight. Ooh, hey. Ooh, a little tricky. Okay, you got me there. Congratulations. Uh, again, I would love to not use the sun card, but, you know, I would love a toilet made of solid gold as well, but it's just not in the cards, is it? We just maybe get a little bit lucky as time goes on here. I don't know. I, I think we're basically guaranteed to have to use it now. So I'm going to use the sun card. It killed some angel fetuses. Took us back to full health. Get him poisoned. I don't really want to drop my last remaining bomb in here. We really have to rely on good items from the chest at this point. Remember where I said, um, if you beat Isaac, maybe you have a better chance to beat Blue Baby? Like, Blue Baby might actually be easier, or the chest plus Blue Baby might be easier? I disagree with that when you carry a sun card into the Isaac fight. Uh, now Blue Baby should be substantially more difficult than this. I can't believe I didn't poison him there. Oh my god, just get the freaking job done. Alright, so we only lost about uh, 20 health on the Isaac fight, and counting. And we got 4 HP left. Let's keep- They're all red chests! Oh, I am actually salty because I'm faulty now. Oh, okay, thank you for dead bird, just in time to be not worth anything at all. What about this one? Guppy's head, oh beautiful, fantastic. And a troll bomb. Well, that's why you don't take the left hand down to the chest. That's okay, though. It's not like it's gonna completely ruin our run or anything like that. No, of course. How much- Oh my god, I think I've lost three hearts on this room already. To some extent, I'm ashamed to admit that I have sort of given up hope on this run now. Um, I was really banking on those red chests, to act, or those golden chests down here that should have been here to actually provide me with something. No such luck, though. I did uh, trap this guy in his own despair, though. Oh, and that'll do it. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this run in spite of that. Uh, lackluster finish there, but as always, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure to show your support. Click the like button. It helps out a great deal, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.